As a child, um, I actually wanted to be a wildlife photographer. Um, I think that was my first overriding passion. I was really interested in wildlife and nature, and I was also really interested in uh, photography. And so I spent quite a bit of time trying to take pictures of birds with my little Kodak instant camera. Um, but I think it definitely sparked an interest in creativity for me. There probably were signs from a fairly young age that I was going to end up doing what I did. Um, I think um, I certainly, when I was younger, had a very keen interest in music and um, I did have, I was very lucky and I had piano lessons and cello lessons as a kid and um, did occasionally do fairly well in the Eisteddfod, for example, uh, performing on cello. Um, however, I think it was probably later on when I was in my teens that I began to um, explore music um, on my own, outside of lessons. So um, I used to play on my parents' piano quite a lot and teach myself uh, songs that I was interested in learning. And then I began learning the guitar as well. And then I started performing in school on guitar and on cello um, and on piano. And I think um, certainly there was definitely an indication that I was interested and keen in, on music. Um, however, I don't think that at the time I even considered it as a possible career, and certainly none of my uh, peers would have either. My interest in music came from quite a young age. Um, I just very, when I was young, I did definitely take an interest in um, old records that my parents had. Um, I was fascinated by instruments that my uh, father could play. My father taught himself to play guitar and uh, squeeze box and mouth organ. And occasionally he'd burst into a room in the house uh, mid-song, um, and which was always very entertaining. Um, we also had a piano in the house. My mother used to uh, play on the piano. So I was definitely interested in music from quite a young age. And um, certainly enjoyed learning instruments when I got a bit older. Um, and then once I got into my teens, I really got into bands and music and it kind of just snowballed from there, really. So my first job was in the Hollybush Inn uh, in Corriton. Um, and that, is, that was as a kitchen porter, uh, which basically means dishwasher. And I worked there for a good long while, while I was in uh, sixth form and towards the end of my uh, GCSE years, um, washing dishes, basically. And um, that's a job I've occasionally gone back to over the years. Um, I've also done uh, bar work. Um, and also, um, I did work for a long time for the National Museum of Wales uh, as an educator. So I used to do workshops for schools and things like that based on um, uh, science education. Um, so when I first began performing, obviously I couldn't just start off making a career out of music because uh, you need to build up a profile. So for many years I was actually juggling two jobs. I was working in the museum and then I was also um, doing music on the side. And then as the years went by, the music became more important and became um, more feasible as a career. And so I was able to cut down on my hours with the museum until in, in the end I made the decision to go full-time professional with the music. So I've had quite a, um, a varied educational journey. Um, when I was, uh, I, I did stay in school and did A-levels. And um, the focus was always, my focus was always on science when I was in school. And so I went to do a science degree at the University of Bristol. Uh, I did a zo zoology degree um, because I was still interested in doing wildlife film and photography. And so it made sense to me to have a zoology degree. Um, so I went to University of Bristol, uh, studied zoology for three years and really enjoyed it. Um, and then when I came out, uh, I worked for a while as a field ornithologist um, so I was basically doing bird surveys, um, travelling around 
the northwest of England uh, doing bird surveys in forests, um, which was a lovely job. Um, and then eventually I moved back to Cardiff where I began uh, working for the museum. Um, and whilst I was working at the museum, I decided to do a master's in film at the University of South Wales in Newport at the time. And um, I studied part time there whilst I was doing my, uh, my work at the museum. Um, and that was again um, because I had an interest in the creative arts and I also was still keen to pursue my interest in wildlife photography and film. Um, however, by the time I'd come towards the end of my master's, um, my music was really starting to take off. I'd just uh, been signed to a label. I was releasing my first album um, the following year. And so I decided to not to pursue the, my, my, my uh, sort of uh, wildlife filmmaking uh, ideas and to just give music a try. Um, and I think it wasn't until that moment that I thought to myself that I might be able to do music as a career. Um, and then slowly but surely I built that up. And then more recently, um, after 10 years of uh, performing and being a musician, I undertook a PhD with the University of South Wales, uh, Newport. Uh, sorry, I undertook a PhD with the University of, of South Wales. Um, and I was studying uh, the connections between Wales and the Cassie Hills in northeastern India and building a musical collaboration with musicians over in India. So um, the, uh, the PhD was essentially a music and performance based PhD. Um, and that was a fascinating way because it allowed me to combine my interests in academia and academic work um, with my passion for music and with creativity. And um, a large part of the PhD was uh, producing uh, music, uh, I had to present a CD basically of music uh, to, uh, to the examiners. Um, so um, I have had quite a varied journey and not many people I don't think have a degree in zoology, a master's in film and a PhD in music and performance. Um, but I think I've just followed my passions and ultimately it's probably ended up giving me quite a rounded CV. Um, uh, so yeah, interesting little journey I suppose. <laughs> I suppose I've been inspired on my journey mainly by my peers. Um, I find it really, really great to be part of a creative community. I think um, creativity can be quite a lonely venture sometimes, especially if you're just working on your own art all the time. And I think actually it's useful to have the support of other people who may be doing different disciplines, maybe not related to your own creative practice, but might be doing something that helps, that, that, that keeps them in the same kind of situations as you. Um, and so for me, my main inspiration has come from other musicians, visual artists, people I've worked with over the years. So for instance, um, I've worked a lot with Daniel Lazenby, a visual artist that produced lots of the artwork for my records, and I find his work really inspirational. Um, the same with Sebastian Goldfinch, who's a string arranger. Um, we've worked together many times over the years to produce string arrangements for my records, and it's always inspiring to hear his music. Um, likewise, Leon Robertson, the producer I've worked with over the many years, he's helped to inspire um, me to be more meticulous with my recordings. Um, but also, so many artists that I've performed with over the years, um, particularly in Cardiff, I've really enjoyed performing with artists like Kate Le Bon, uh, H. Hawkline, Richard James, Aku, uh, so many others um, over the years that have just sort of helped me to push my own creative boundaries and help me to think about creativity in a different way. And I think that's probably good advice for anybody involved in the creative arts or who wants to pursue a creative career, I think it's find find a scene, a creative scene that you fit into or that you, that you can be a part of and you probably find it's very supportive and helps you to be a better artist. I think in general what's inspired me about other people who have been working with over the years or other musicians in the creative scene that I've been involved in here in Cardiff and in general in Wales as well, is they've helped me to try to improve what I've done already. So try to um, push myself when I make the next record and help me as well. Um, so for example, um, instead of 
performing cello on 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 my debut record, which I, on my debut record I, I performed cello on the cello, and on the second record, I wanted better string arrangements and better um, string players. So I worked with Seb Goldfinch, uh, string arranger, and the Mavron String Quartet, and that helped to raise that standard of that record up because it was a professional musicians, whereas uh, performing. Um, string arrangements, whereas before, when it was just me on the cello, it was a little bit more basic. And so I think it's just trying to find people that inspire you, and finding people that you can work with, and that can actually, you can help each other, you know, um, uh, you can help each other's creativity. So I think for me, it's just finding people, finding the right people that kind of maybe uh, plate, that maybe help to strengthen your own creative practice. Um, so if you have weaknesses that you want to improve on, sometimes working with other people who are good at those things is the best way to improve yourself. I would say um, probably it's learn to uh, identify your strengths as a musician and try to improve on your strengths and also try to build on your weaknesses um, because I think it helps to be versatile, especially in today's uh, economy and market. It's, it, is, it is very hard uh, and competitive to be a musician, um, but there are lots of different uh, types of um, jobs you can do as a musician. You could be playing in an orchestra, you could be writing music for film, uh, you could be performing and gigging like I do, um, you, you could be a, a composer for other people. Um, and I think that it helps to be quite um, uh, broad in your skills. Um, if you're looking to become a performer, I would say just spend lots of time practicing your craft, practicing your instrument and practicing your singing um, and your songwriting, um, because ultimately um, those are the things you're going to be judged on and those are the things that uh, are most important for you.